the Georgia Department of Community Affairs and the National Main Street Center welcome you to the 2015 National Main Streets Conference. Thank you all for being here, and a big thanks to our conference sponsors. We are so excited to spend the next few days celebrating Team Main Street. Please join me in welcoming Barbara Sidway, Chair of the National Main Street Center Board of Directors, RMC for the evening, to the stage. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Atlanta. It's so good to be here. So I am Barbara Sidway. I have the honor of chairing the board of directors of the National Main Street Center. And I'm so pleased to welcome you to Atlanta for the 2015 National Main Streets Conference. We are all so excited to be here. And I know you're going to have a great time. And how wonderful it is to kick it off in this spectacular setting. So, so first of all, we'd like to thank our partners and co-hosts, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs and Georgia Main Street for working tirelessly over the last year to help create what I know will be an outstanding conference. And in particular, I'd like to recognize Camila Knowles and our own Billy Peppers. Thank you. Billy Peppers, of course, is the Main Street Coordinator and the Director of the Office of Downtown Development. And uh, both of their leadership and direction has been fantastic. It wouldn't be possible without it. And of course, the wonderful team of staff and volunteers that you've put together, can't thank you enough. Now, to each of you in attendance, we know that you all do such amazing work dedicating yourselves to creating vibrant communities across this country. And we know that it is often hard and thankless work and that's why this conference is such a priority for the National Main Street Center. And in fact, my co-members of the Board of Directors are here, here with me to celebrate you. Now you may see a little theme in this uh, Southern contingent. I don't know how that was planned. It wasn't with my, uh, with my guidance, but Irv Henderson from North Carolina, Joe, Joe Grills from Virginia, David Brown from Tennessee, Beppe Legrand from South Carolina, I can't make this up, <laughs> and Daryl Young, <laughs> international man of mystery. Now every year at this conference we come together to celebrate all that hard work that you do and we want to give you the motivation, the tools, and the connections to go back home with a renewed sense of purpose and determination. Now those of you who are first timers, I've got to give you a heads up. This is unlike any conference that you've ever been to. Over the next few days, you'll get to explore neighborhoods across this great city of Atlanta. You'll learn from experts in the community revitalization field. You'll meet peers who know better than anyone the kind of challenges that you face in your work. And this is Main Street though, so you're gonna have a lot of fun. Now this conference wouldn't have been possible without generous contributions from many sponsors including Georgia Power, Georgia Downtown Association, Contributing Georgia Main Street Cities, the Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation, Safeguard, American Express, Kaiser Permanente, the National Park Service, the Georgia Municipal Association, the Georgia Academy for Economic Development, Seiforth Shaw LLC, National Trust Community Investment Corporation, bb &T, the Georgia Department of Economic Development Tourism Division, Central Atlanta Progress, Georgia Appalachian Regional Commission, and the Georgia Cities Foundation. Thank you. Just a few housekeeping notes before we get on with the show. The Main Street Expo opens tomorrow at 8 a.m. That's over in the Omni. Be sure and stop by the hall, please, to visit with our exhibitors. Then there's the Expo Reception, which is sponsored by American Express. That'll be held tomorrow from 4.30 to 6 in the Expo Hall. Um, there's a little ticket in everybody's registration packet. If you've just registered, don't miss it because it includes an adult beverage. Just saying. You'll also have a chance to rent an iPad Mini and other prizes by attending, so it's a not-missed thing. 
Also want to encourage you to attend tomorrow's special film screening of Urban Century, America's Return to Main Street. That's produced by the filmmakers who did today's, or this year's Gams of Videos. That's going to be held in Grand Ballroom A at the lunch hour tomorrow. And please do engage on social media with fellow conference attendees, as well as those who couldn't make it this year. Let's make sure they're very, very sorry they didn't get their tickets to Atlanta. So you want to use hashtag NSMC Atlanta, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you know share your thoughts, experience, photos. Uh, nice or not, we're happy to see them. And also there's that new app that's really kind of fabulous, Billy, where you can do roll call and uh, post, post there as well. Now, on that app, we've got something new this year. The evaluations for the sessions are not going to be some page you have to fill out and turn in. They're going to be electronic. So it's going to be quick and easy. It's just a star rating system. It's important that we get that feedback because that's what we use to build an even stronger lineup for next year's conference. So we'd appreciate that. So now, it is my honor to welcome to the stage Georgia's governor, Nathan Deal. This governor is a native of Sandersville, Georgia. He and his wife, Sandra Deal, now call Gainesville, Georgia their home, which is a classic Georgia Main Street community. After a long span of service to his community as prosecutor, judge, state senator, and U.S. congressman, Governor Deal ended his 17-year congressional career to become governor of Georgia in January 2011, and in 2014, he was reelected and is serving his second term in office. He is rightfully proud that Georgia has risen to become the number one state in the country in which to do business, according to Forbes magazine. Please help me welcome Governor Deal. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. To those of you who are our guests here from out of state, uh, welcome to Georgia. And to those of you who are our natives here in our own state, please extend the courtesy that we are famous for here in the South, and I'm sure that you will. And to those of you from right here in Georgia, I want to thank you for what you just heard, and that is the distinction that we have been named at least now twice uh, and repeating that in a second year as the number one state in the nation in which to do business. Many of you in this room helped make that possible. I hope that you will have a good time while you're here for your conference. What a great place to be in the Fox Theater to kick it off. Now, you know, Georgia has been a member of the National Main Street Program since its beginning back in 1980. And we were one of the first states in the nation to create programming that it related to downtown development. We currently have more participating Main Street initiatives in local communities than any other state in the nation. 83 of these 103 Georgia Main Street cities are nationally accredited, and our startup program uh, had some record number of 17 new cities become designated uh, in our classic Main Street program in January of this year. And since this is the first time that this conference has been held here in Georgia, we especially think it is timely that we have it here on this 30th national meeting for Main Street. Now, Georgia has many recognizable corporate brands. But they got their start in almost every case in the downtown part of some city in our state, Coca-Cola. It started as a product being sold at drug stores and in department stores in many communities in our state. And as a young boy growing up, I remember walking by the Coca-Cola bottling plant and seeing those bottles come down the line. Every community in our state has a recognized association with Coca-Cola and it is probably the most recognizable brand in the world. Chick-fil-A, it got its start at the Dwarf House on Main Street in Hapeville, Georgia, and it too has grown to be one of the largest national food chains in the world. Today, there are over 140 downtown development authorities that work in Georgia, and they are cultivating similar business creations and expansions. 
And thanks to initiatives like the Georgia Main Street Program, we are strengthening our downtowns and investing in the economic future of our state as a whole. This program for Georgia has garnered some $3.3 billion in public and private sector investment for rehabilitation, infill development, and public improvement projects. It has helped create some 6,537 net new jobs through downtown business growth. And it has helped create some 12,898 net new businesses that have been opening and sustaining themselves in downtowns all across our state. Now, in my first term as governor, I promised to do all that I could do to make Georgia the number one state in the nation for business. As I indicated, most of you here in this room from Georgia helped make that achievement possible. And we're going to work very hard in this second term to maintain that very important distinction. We're going to try to make sure that we as a state put in place policies that encourage rather than inhibit new businesses and create the expansion of existing businesses. I'll tell you a quick story in one of our economic development trips where we were talking to a company about coming to Georgia. Um, they were concerned that we may throw up roadblocks at the state level and at the local level by way of permitting and other type of hurdles that sometimes they've been accustomed to having to get over. Well, I happened to cite to them the fact that uh, a couple of years ago now, when Caterpillar decided to move a plant from Japan to mainland USA, they decided to go to the Athens, Georgia area. And I was telling the CEO that, you know, that's the only groundbreaking that I've ever been to where in less than one year, they were having the ribbon cutting and were rolling their finished product off of the assembly line. I said, that's a pretty good indication that we don't throw up unnecessary roadblocks to business. He turned to his development vice president and said, I expect you to abide by the same timeline. <laughs> but whether you know it or not, you, as part of local businesses and uh, local governing authorities, have a lot to do with who decides to come to which state. One of the surest things, though, that we believe we can do to maintain good business environment in our state is to have a pipeline of a highly skilled workforce. Over the last several years since I've been governor, we have worked very hard at continuing to develop and encourage our young people to get the kind of quality education and to acquire the skills that you will need in your businesses and others will need in theirs. Uh, for those of you who are Georgia residents, I am thankful that the General Assembly is going to allow you and all of us in Georgia to vote next November of next year uh, in 2016 on a constitutional amendment that will allow us to be able to intervene in chronically failing schools. These are problem schools that we know we need to do something about, and I hope that you will see fit to uh, help us in that initiative. Because you see a workforce that is dependable and one that has the skills and the ability to learn is a workforce that you need, and it is a workforce that we will need in many other areas in the future. Now, we know that you do a great job in developing your downtown communities. And as I travel around our state, that is one of the things that I think I am most proud of, is to see what people have done to transform their communities. Now, most of the signs that I saw before I came out were from southern states that were a part of what we were a part of many years ago, the old textile belt. And as we know, much of that, in fact most of it, migrated overseas because of lower wages being paid for what was at that point in time a very highly intensified labor-related issues. But you know, those buildings that have stood in those communities where they closed down the mills, many of them have really done well to convert those. They've converted them into office buildings. They've converted them into civic centers. And they have taken an asset that otherwise could have gone into disrepair. 
but because of initiatives by, I'm sure, many of you in this room today, you have taken the, uh, the forethought and the, and the hard work that it takes to not let your community go down, to increase it, and to make it more beautiful. And I congratulate you on that. So, you're here because you're concerned about the future. You're here because you understand that no community can be good unless it's downtown is prospering and thriving. I thank you for those in the state of Georgia who have made the downtown communities of our state so thriving and so prosperous. And for those of you from out of our state, I wish you the same success that we have experienced here in our state. And while you're here, please spend a lot of money <laughs> because we may not get a chance to host this convention until another 30 years have passed. But we hope that you enjoy your stay here. We want to make sure that you come back. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Deal, for that warm welcome. And we also have, us, uh, have with us uh, today Adina Earle, who is the Vice President and General Manager of the Fox Theater. They have generously given us this beautiful venue to enjoy. Uh, ask her to come up and say a few words to us. Thank you. Well, welcome. Thank you all for joining us um, on this very special occasion. On behalf of the Fox Theater Board of Directors and its staff, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the beloved Atlanta Landmarks, which is the fabulous Fox Theater. <laughs> In 1974, the future of the theater of this legendary landmark was uncertain. Financial troubles were threatening to make this historic venue a thing of the past, and its owner was searching for a buyer, which would have resulted in the destruction of the theater. But the people of Atlanta rallied together to save the Fox, raising money and driving awareness for one of the city's greatest landmarks. Together, this passionate community painted a bright future for the Fox Theater. Can you imagine this glorious theater having been torn down, not being here today? It's amazing. Now, 40 years later, we are celebrating the saving of the Fox Theater. It's thanks to the community that our legacy was kept alive and endures to this day. Now, the seeds of Main Street's four-point approach were created because of movements like this. Organization, promotion, design, and economic restructuring were essential to the survival of this theater. Today, the Fox has much to be proud of as the efforts and sacrifice of the Atlanta community have resulted in making us a world-class theater and organization. The Fox Theater hosts 250 performances a year. We welcome over 600,000 guests in our auditorium and ballrooms every year. And we reinvest over a million dollars in capital improvements and preservation projects into the theater. But for the past decade, we have been ranked as one of the highest grossing theaters worldwide. But it doesn't, it doesn't stop there. By preserving this historic landmark, and I know you Main Streeters know, the community also changed the economic paradigm of the Peachtree Street Corridor in Midtown. Today, our neighborhood boasts of more than $4.5 billion of new investments since 1997 and is an excellent example of a walkable community. With four miles of bike lanes, 14 miles of sidewalks, and extensive transit options, over 6 million square feet of office space, and more than 7,600 residential units and counting, I can go on and on. But it is a poster child for the live, work, play movement. Most importantly, the Fox Theater recognizes that we are only as strong as the community that we serve. In 2008, the Fox Theater Institute was launched and seeks to revitalize communities one theater at a time. 
by funding grants to other historic theaters and arts presenters throughout the state, the Fox Theater Institute ensures that the legacy of saving the Fox endures for years to come. All of this has been accomplished thanks to the support of our community. So again, welcome to Atlanta and welcome to the fabulous Fox Theater. The legend of the Fox lives on with you. Thank you very much. Wow, what a preservation success story. Talk about economic sustainability and a spectacular save. Oh, wonderful inspiration already. So now I have the honor of introducing you all to Camila Knowles, the Commissioner of Georgia Department of Community Affairs. She was appointed by government, Governor Deal this year. Ms. Knowles was, uh, uh, leads DCA's work for community development, ensuring that through workforce housing, community infrastructure, downtown development and economic development financing, communities are prepared for opportunities to meet Governor Deal's top priority, creating jobs across the state of Georgia. Please, please join me in welcoming Ms. Knowles. Well, good afternoon, Main Streeters. I'm so excited to be here and I have a really great speech I'm gonna to read to y'all, but first, because I can't believe I'm here on the Fox stage and all y'all are so good looking. I'm gonna step over here and I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna take a selfie with all y'all in the background because my parents aren't gonna believe it either. So I love all the state balloons. So when I turn around, if y'all could just indulge me and maybe stand up and wave your balloons, we'll text it and hashtag it so y'all can all see what you look like here, okay? Okay, the spotlight got in our way a little bit, but we'll show you what it looks like. So we are really excited to have all of you here. This is an exciting week for us in Georgia at DCA, and to have you all here gives us a chance to show you how much we love and treasure our downtowns and our main streets, and it's just a great honor. We hope you'll leave here after the next few days knowing that we appreciate you and all that you do. Because at the end of the day, we know that what you do day in and day out is breathe life into the hearts of our small towns. And I'm so lucky because I get to watch that happen at the statewide level at the Department of Community Affairs and the work that we do, specifically the work of our downtown development program uh, with staffers like Billy Peppers, Jessica Reynolds, Lee Burns, Karen Thor Thornton, Kim Carter, and Carmine Fischetti. And they are also the ones who have put so much time and energy into putting this conference on. So could y'all join me in thanking them for their efforts. It is really amazing the amount of work that is accomplished through our small staff at DCA to make life better for Georgians in small towns where the square once was or is now the place to be. And y'all, I do not stand here before you today as a big city girl from Atlanta who only understands bumper to bumper traffic and high rises, okay? I was born and raised in a town called Moultrie, Georgia, which is one of Georgia's greatest small towns, if you ask me. And my memories of growing up there are ones that I really treasure and share with my children today. And I have to tell you, if you have never been to Moultrie during the Thanksgiving and Christmas season, then you have not done it right. I may sound biased, but I am completely biased. There is just nothing like Thanksgiving night in Moultrie. At exactly six o'clock in the evening, they light this huge three-story Christmas tree and this canopy of multicolored lights gets illuminated. And these lights string across downtown storefronts and up to the top of the prettiest courthouse in the state of Georgia. Now I'm saying that because my mom is the architect who did the redesign of that courthouse. <laughs> it is really something to see. And my memories just center so much of growing up around downtown Moultrie. I could walk into a little dress shop and take out an outfit on approval 
and pay for it later. Now, my dad did not like that I could do this, but I could do it, and it was awesome. And I can still do it today, and the bill still goes to my dad. Um, <laughs> it's really a great thing. I can remember uh, there was an old drugstore called McCorkle's, and we would go there in the afternoons after school and get a grilled cheese and a Coke float. Um, and I can remember just going into any downtown business, and these people knew me by name. And there is, there is something to be said for that. So my downtown of Moultrie has seen times of great vibrancy and times of distress, really. I can remember some Thanksgiving nights. I mean, y'all really do need to go down there and see these Christmas lights. But I can remember times when my family would go down there on Thanksgiving, light, on Thanksgiving night and no one was around. And now we welcome thousands and thousands of uh, people from around town and from around the region who come down there. And much of that is thanks to the great work of uh, the leadership of our Moultrie Main Street director, Amy Johnson. I think she's here and she just does a fabulous job. There she is. Hey, Amy. So. And in addition to the holiday festivities, we also have uh, the annual Spring Fling Festival for outdoor concerts and uh, it has a little amphitheater and a bunch of bands play. And really, all these stories I'm telling you about growing up in my small town of Moultrie and our downtown there uh, probably sounds very familiar to you because this is what all of you do in the trenches every day to make your communities better. And I started thinking about, you know, what is it that makes downtowns so important and so special? It's really more than just a set of buildings, if you think about it. It's the stories of those who have lived and worked in those communities and how they influence the communities to be what they are today. It's inclusive, entrepreneurs, residents, visitors, they all converge on our downtowns from various backgrounds, representing multiple generations with the goal of being a part of someplace special. It's dynamic, in a constant state of change, evolving business plans, changing personalities, continuous events and upkeep make downtown a place that is never stagnant. But yet to me, in so many ways, it's the bedrock of these communities. There are those restaurants or small businesses whose owners are really pillars of your communities. And their businesses create the character of that community. And because of that, they make your town feel like home. They exist for me in Moultrie. There are those places that I still do go when I visit my parents who still live there. And they exist in towns like yours all across America. So what does Main Street look like across the state of Georgia? The governor gave a few stats, and I'm going to read some as well. Our Georgia Main Street Network includes 103 cities. Of our 83 nationally accredited communities, the populations range in size from about 1,100 residents in Buchanan to more than 200,000 in Columbus. Like many of your states, we have diversity in landscape, from mountain communities to the sandy shores on the seacoast. We have Main Street communities popping up in our suburbs like Woodstock, Swanee, and Avondale Estates. We have Main Streets growing in the agricultural region in places like Vidalia, Swainsboro, and Tifton. Our Main Street communities are managed in a variety of forms. Some are in chambers of commerce like in Covington and Warrington. Some are nonprofits like in Perry and Carrollton. Others are housed with downtown development authorities like in Dalton and Athens. We have a talented pool of volunteers that support the efforts of Main Streets. Over the last decade, volunteers have logged 2.3 million hours. If you're a Main Street board member or volunteer in Georgia, can you stand up so we can give you a round of applause? We have unbelievable community champions in our professional Main Street managers here in Georgia, and I want to take just a second to specifically recognize one of those members for her service. Ann Arnold of Rome, Georgia, is celebrating 30 years as a Main Street manager in our state and is one of our pioneers in downtown development in Georgia. She has used her years of service as a platform to help other managers create firm foundations for their careers to advocate for Georgia Downtown Association's professional development certification, and to be a sounding board for our agency. And thank you so much for 30 years of work in what has been a labor of love, I know. Thank you.
Now I finally have to recognize our local program managers or staff members for Main Street organizations. We know that y'all are often called on to be the everything, the Mr. or Mr. Fix-It employee in your community, from putting out decorations to landing million dollar economic development deals and everything in between, y'all do it all. And I just wanna say thanks to you and your towns, we appreciate you as well. Yeah, we should clap for them. So how do we at the Georgia Department of Community Affairs support Main Streets? Well, one, through our downtown design studio, we have staff designers work with communities to build concepts from historic rehabilitation projects and facade designs to park plans, corridor improvements, and character area plans. We work with communities to make downtowns look better. We also have a downtown development revolving loan fund which allows our agency to provide low interest loans, as little as 2% interest in Main Street communities to help get projects off the ground by closing gaps. And today our fund has been used in 138 projects for over $23 million in financial support. We also provide technical assistance. The Office of Downtown Development provides training throughout the year to our programs and communities through workshops in collaboration with the Georgia Downtown Association for the annual state conference and through rep, rep, excuse me, webinars. And finally, through promotion, utilizing technology, DCA helps Main Streets through promoting the brand of Georgia Main Street and highlighting community projects, events, and activities. You see, at DCA and throughout Georgia, we really care about seeing the hearts of our communities, our downtowns, grow and thrive. And that happens with blood, sweat, and tears of our Main Street developers, our Main Street programs, and our downtown developers. We know that your small towns across our great nation are no different. Your love for your communities is what is making life better for American small towns like Bath, Maine, Rollins, Wyoming, Fort Pierce, Florida, and if y'all are here, I need to meet you. Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. <laughs> oh my God, they're here, yay. But really, I'm here this week to say welcome to Georgia. We hope you leave here having experienced Southern hospitality, and I hope you have a great conference, and thank you for helping me take my selfie. Y'all made my day. <laughs> Well, you guys really get it here in Georgia. I am so impressed, Billy. So uh, we have sort of a special guest with us tonight that I've had the privilege of calling a friend for many years. Marita Rivera was recently elected chairman of the National Trust Board of Trustees. I had the privilege of casting my vote there before I went emeritus recently. And um, Marita retired as the executive director of WGBH Boston, the public broadcasting powerhouse. You know, biggest powerhouse in the country. Um, and so just shortly after retiring, we cleverly, you know, just kind of snapped her up to serve as our leader. Uh, she continues to serve on the board of National Public Radio and on the board of the new African American History Museum that'll be on the mall in, the, um, in DC. Um, but what they didn't tell me about Marita, and I know because I know her as a friend, is she is such a real dyed-in-the-wool grassroots preservationist, and it's, it's no, you won't find it anywhere on the internet, but oh, the stories she can tell you. Uh, she grew up at, at a, um, um, a Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, which is a traditionally black university where her father was a professor, so I think that's where she really, you know, sort of fall, fell in love with history. And she was personally instrumental in um, saving the African Meeting House in Boston, which I think was built in 1805 and is one of the most important places in black history in the country. And certainly saw lots of challenges in saving it and in imbuing it with a new sense of purpose and uh, financial success. So you're going to have to see if you can pry those stories out of Marita. Please join me in welcoming her. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Atlanta. Uh, it's good to be with you, and it's great to be back in Georgia. I can't think of a better place for this 2015 National Main Streets Conference. Uh, I was over in Savannah a few months ago for the National Preservation Conference, uh, passed forward, and so we just keep coming back here. And as I've listened to the people who spoke before, uh, before I am, you know why. Uh, our hosts have really been leading the way in preservation-based revitalization 
uh, for of our downtowns and communities for many years. And I thank you for that. So Governor Deal and everyone here from Georgia today, and particularly from, uh, certainly from Atlanta, thank you for having us, and thank you for really setting a standard nationwide. It's just been terrific. Um, I also want to give a shout out to my home state folks in Massachusetts. You know, are you, are you in the house? <laughs> thank you. Uh, I did grow up at Lincoln, uh, which is in the country south of um, uh, Philadelphia. So our closest town was three miles away, Oxford, and it had 3,000 people in it. It only, it only ever has 3,000 people. And one time I came home and there was a Main Street, Oxford, uh, Maryland. I know all you guys, the Elkton program, so you're my part of the country too. Uh, and it's always terrific to just see the kinds of works, work that's going on in places, yes, as large as Boston, but also as tiny as these very small towns. Um, because it's the lifeblood of those of us who've grown, grown up there and lived there. So this is my first Main Street conference as chair of the National Trust. And I have to say I'm in awe of what you do. For over 35 years now, Main Street has been on the cutting edge of community revitalization. Um, the Main Street's four points approach was cutting edge before we even knew there was something we were supposed to cut. Um, I mean that. Um, Everything suggests that even 35 years later, the Main Street approach is still the path to the future for our cities. So at our preservation, Green Lab, the research arm of the National Trust, we spent the last several years looking deeply at exactly how and why certain neighborhoods thrive, what part older and historic buildings play in that whole process. And to figure this out, we've been combining innovative research into issues like cell phone usage, traditional approaches like uh, neighborhood survey uh, work, and uh, state-of-the-art computing into geolocating uh, mapping techniques. We've been combing building by building, block by block, in cities all over America. And all the data and empirical survey work, all of the evidence we're collecting, has reinforced what you already know. Neighborhoods with older buildings bring more people together. Yeah. They bring more people together. And those people are diverse. They're diverse in age, in race, in income. They have more people and businesses per square foot. They are far more walkable. This guy got a list. They have more new businesses, more women-owned businesses, more minority-owned businesses, more creative jobs more activity on even, evening and weekends. They are thriving communities. They are the downtowns and main streets that your hard work, your passion, and your dedication help to prosper. And I'm proud of all of us and all of you for that. And they are all over the country. We just had our National Trust board meeting in New Orleans, and I had a chance to take in one of the Louisiana Main Street uh, streets, the Aretha Castle, Haley Boulevard. Uh, so while there, we saw the New Orleans Jazz Market, which is a redevelopment of one of the city's oldest and busiest public markets um, uh, that opened in the uh, early 1900s and, and operated throughout that century. <clears throat> so it's soon going to be a new performance hall for the New Orleans uh, Jazz Orchestra. And it's near the all-new home of the Southern Food and Beverage Museum. So we also took in the Myrtle Banks Building, an Italian Renaissance Revival Elementary School that was built in 1910, it was closed in 2002, and the victim of a devastating four-alarm fire uh, in 2008. So here in 2015, it's coming to life again as a community space, a grocery store, offices, a museum, and it's anchoring uh, and reinvestment and revitalization along that whole uh, corridor. So this same story of reverse and revitalization is happening all across America. This is the power of what you do. You keep our main streets thriving at the heart of our community, moving really to the beat of our people. You all know how successful you are and what a difference you make and have made for over 35 years now. But just to be sure, Patrice and the Main Street Center have given me the special privilege today of telling you the all new reinvestment statistics for 2014. Uh, do you want to hear them? Okay, I got four, maybe five points here. 
Last year, our Main Street saw 3.1 billion reinvested in physical improvements from public and private sources for a grand total of 61.7 billion. Yeah, that's pretty good. 800 and 8,294 buildings were rehabbed, adding to a cumulative total of 251,838 rehabs since Main Street started. 5,548 new businesses opened their doors. That brings the total to 120,510 net new businesses since 1980. Yeah. And the jobs, you see that there. Our Main Street's created 28,340 new jobs. That means 528,557 net new jobs, thanks to the work you do. Thank you. And I just want to kind of make the point again that for every dollar spent on Main Street, $26 was invested in public and private sources in rehabs and adaptive use projects. So that's a 1 to 26 ratio. That's pretty amazing. Um, I want to applaud you. Thank you for all the work that you do. It's been terrific. And let's keep it up. Main Street is a proven, time-honored, winning approach to revitalizing our communities. It is leveraging the powerful and potential of older buildings toward success. And it's bringing prosperity, sustainability, and a higher quality of life to cities, downtowns, families, neighborhoods all across America. And we are only 35 years old. We have a lot more good work to do. So let's have a great conference, learn from one another, have a good time here in Atlanta, and let's keep moving our downtowns forward. Thank you. Have a great conference. Thank you, Marita. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you, well, not introduce you to, because I think you know Patrice Fry, our CEO and leader. Um, actually, she has a master's in preservation planning from Penn, you might not know that, and had a whole career in community development and urban research before we, we came across her. And in fact, she was serving, she really, in my opinion, she really built the, the Preservation Green Lab. It was a, a creation of the trust, but it was through her leadership that it really came into its own and did such great work. And the study that Marita was just telling you about um, was actually you know, begun under Patrice's leadership. And we were so, so happy to be able to steal her from them shamelessly in May 2013. And so won't you help me welcome Patrice to the stage and happy to hear from her. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Atlanta. How's everyone doing? Good. I only wish I could see all of you. I have these blinding lights. So anyway, I am so excited to be here. I want to start off by thanking the